Yeah, let's talk about that first win, that breakthrough in uh, December 1975, Val uh, set up the race for us. Uh, did you have an inkling that this could happen? Well, um, I, I did. Uh, I'd actually joked a couple of weeks before at a training camp uh, with with uh, Scotty, our, our Scotty Henderson, our coach, saying, you know, wouldn't it be funny that the first time I'm skiing in the first seed, I get number one and I win the race. And everybody kind of went, ha, 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 ha. And so uh, night before the race, uh, he uh, walked in and said, hey, you got the number you wanted. <laughs> he threw number one out on my bed. And and I said, well, no, 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 no. I, I actually <laughs> didn't want number one because number one is, is uh, you know, you, you, the track does speed up very slightly. Uh-huh. But um, uh, in, in, in retrospect, it turned out, well, that year Valdezere was a low snow year. Uh, the track was very, very rough and bumpy. You could see it in the in the video there that our skis were rattling around, which they did a lot back in those days because the the course preparation was quite different than what it is what it is today. But um, I didn't have any preconceptions. Uh, training had gone well. We had we had good training in that fall uh, up in Zermatt. Uh, we uh, managed to you know in, through the week of because tr- you have three days of, of training runs to uh, familiarize yourself with the track. And that had gone well, but nothing that had indicated that there, there was going to be a win. Um, and then I, I just know in, in pushing out uh, of the start gates and, and the run that I had. Now, when you're racing down a track, um, you're not you're not analyzing as you go. You're just doing. Right. You, you've trained yourself to just react and go. Um, and I but I had the sense of every, the line was flowing really well. And I know one of my competitors, Werner Griesman from Austria, said afterwards, um, I saw his track and I just knew that this is going to be tough to try to beat him. So, but the, the, what the shows here, this section is that's the compression right there. And you can see, I, I really launched, um, as it turned out, that was a very pivotal jump because it was really tricky. And even though it didn't look, you know, it looked like, okay, that was no big deal. You, you went up in the air and you kind of had your ski slide out. You should have seen everybody else. They were launched right. and, and, and people were all over the place. And that was um, the difference. Now, Franz Klammer was the downhiller to beat at that time. He'd, he'd won every downhill the year before. And uh, so we were waiting. I was number one. Franz was number 14. And, uh, you know, I couldn't believe that, you know, Dave came down and he was sitting right by, a second behind me. Uh, Bernard Russi, who was the, uh, was the uh, defending Olympic champion, he came down and he was just behind me. And then, so we're all waiting for Franz. And as he came into that uh-huh. final stretch, he actually caught an edge and crashed. Oh. And my reaction was, I, I stuck my hands up in the air <laughs> and then immediately pulled him down because I'm going, <laughs> you know, yeah. I knew I'd won the race, but I'm going, but is he okay? 